For those of you that don't know, the story of Weymouth Football Club is one that's worthy of any Hollywood blockbuster, from celebrity managers in Steve Claridge to author owners in Ian Ridley. The Terror's recent history mm. has seen 14 managers in 10 years. Yeah. That's a, a lot of managers. Today, the rumour that Martin Rogers, their latest manager, has resigned to become the 15th through the door at the Southern League Premier Club. But apparently... That's not right. And he's back after a quick word with the former chairman, George Rolls, who I believe we have on the line now. Evening, George. Very good evening. So what's the truth then, George? Is is Martin still in his job? Was he ever in danger of walking out or what happened? Well, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm no longer chairman of the club and um, no longer on the board. Um, however... I did speak to Martin today because I'd heard heard rumours that he'd uh, he'd resigned, and uh, just obviously as my family still a majority shareholders, um, thought it was best to try and intervene if we could. And uh, luckily, after speaking with Martin, he's uh, he obviously is still in charge of the football club. Doesn't that confuse matters, though, George? You know, you say you're no longer chairman, but your family is still involved, and yet you're talking to the manager to try and bring bring him back on side. Mm. Was it purely because of the relationship you have with him? No, not at all. And uh, I think that um, you know most people are not staffed enough to, to to understand that you know if you're if if you're majority shareholders, you've you've got a you've got vested interests, so you want what's best, don't you? So. Um, you're not just going to allow a, a decent guy to walk away. You know his, his record speaks for itself, and uh, you know his, what he's done since uh, since he's been down at Weymouth has been, has been fantastic. And if we'd have had him for probably a month or so earlier, we'd uh, would have definitely stayed up. George, George it's Dave Anderson. Uh, I just like to. The your statement about um, a vested interest. I think that um, you know the the stories and rumours going around of that you, your vested interest is the land that the ground's built on. Um, and for Weymouth supporters, their fear would be what you're going to do with that as the owner of the football club. Now, this is your chance to to, to put them all at ease. Yeah, first, first of all, um, I'm not the owner of the football club. Um, you know, my family are majority shareholders. So that's, that's, the, first, that's the first point. I'm, I'm not a participant in one little way in Weymouth Football Club anymore. The fans. Um, yeah. Go on, Dave. Sorry, no, sorry, 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 sorry George. It's Dave's question, but yeah. Um, yeah. you say it's your family. But what are they going to do? Is it your your, your mum, your dad, your brother, your sister? But what? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole family. We, we enjoy our football. So um, you know, my wife now is a, is, a, is an ardent right. football fan. Oh, no, I accept that. I, no, no, I accept that. But there's fears that whoever controls the football club is just going to sell it off for the land. So. Being obviously, a, you're saying that your family control the club. Speaking on behalf of your family, as, if you like, as their spokesman and the ex-chairman, what would you say to the fans that Dave was asking about? Yeah, the the, the, the situation isn't about selling off the the land. Um, you know, we the, the situation is quite clear that the outside of the football ground isn't owned by us. You know, the the football club owns the stadium. Um, I've gone on public record while while I was chairman stating that the club possibly can't afford to continue playing there and, and will go to look to ground share. Now, now I'm not on the board. That's not my decision to make. But uh, if you want my opinion, the best thing to do is to, to uproot down the road and move into Dorchester and to ground share. Where does that money go then, George, for the sale of the, for the ground? The, the, if the ground was sold, it would go to Weymouth Football Club. But it's not, you know, that's not on the horizon. That's not something. Who, who does it? Who does it go to at Weymouth Football Club? Does it go to your family, or does it get reinvested back into the club? Say they were to go to Dorchester and ground share. Mm. If there's a ground share to Dorchester, that doesn't mean that the land's being sold. The reason that that my suggestion when I was chairman to move to Dorchester was because the Bob Lucas Stadium, playing in the Southern League, has too much costs attached to it. Now, you know, as things look at the moment, relegation's a possibility as well, you know, and when you're going further down the, the chain and you've got a stadium that's fit to hold, you know, conference premier football, um, it, there's a lot of running costs attached to it. And it'd actually be cheaper to go and play at Dorchester. Now, unfortunately, the fans haven't been turning out at Weymouth. You know, the, the crowds are down to mid 500s. And it, it's got to pay for itself, and if it can't, then but one George, option is the ground share. George, 
it, it, all right, so you move to Dorchester and you ground your... What happens to the stadium then? What happens to the ground? Well, the, again, you know, it's something that, the you know, I, I know what I, what I would be doing, but... What would you be doing then? What would you be doing then? But what would you be doing? Yeah, but what would you be doing? What I would be doing is uh, approaching the landowners of the outside of the ground about the possibility of either relocating Weymouth Football Club or looking at uh, buying the option agreement off the football club, which would then secure the club's future long term. Right, but without a ground? And I think, and I think what the... But, what, sorry, but without a ground? Which could, financially it would secure them, but they wouldn't have a ground. Yeah, but what you've got to bear in mind, Dave, is that, you know, you look in Italy and abroad, ground share is acceptable. And I think that once one of the big boys do it here... Everyone will be doing it. You know, commercially, it isn't viable to play 24 games a season at mm. home, and that's all that the stadium's used for. Yeah, but George, George you know, <laughs> what's valuable, as a football supporter, every football supporter wants their own stadium, and when they've got their own stadium, it is, you know, it's the one asset that the football club's got. Now, yeah, when it's in the hands of, when it's in the hands of people who want to do something else with it, then people start to get worried. Now, all this, you're not on the board. It's your family that owns the club, isn't it? You and your family. Dave, let's get this quite quite straight now. When you say that fans want this one, that yeah, my my former club, Cambridge United, are looking to move out of their ground, and they and they're looking to have a community stadium that will be housed with Cambridge United and possibly Cambridge City or Histon. It could be two or two companies. Yeah, but George, George, that's a whole different argument. Forward. Let's, George, George, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to talk about the Weymouth argument. And the it's Weymouth the argument forward, is... Dave. What? It's the way forward for football. But would Cambridge <coughs> United fans give them the chance? I'm sure they'd probably want to stay at, at the Abbey if they owned it still, but the yeah. fact of the matter is they don't own it, so they, they've got no choice. They've yep. tried to buy it back. They've, they mm. couldn't raise enough money to buy it back. No, I don't. I don't. I don't think that's that's true. You've got to look at the fact that you know, because health and safety's gone mad nowadays. Um, the problem that you have is that, that a lot of the stadiums are getting old and need a lot of work doing on. And, and our stadiums are exactly the same at Weymouth. You know, there's there's areas that need a lot of work doing on it that, that comes with a with a high cost. George, um, George, George. Yeah, fair enough. I just want to bow out of this this debate now with, with what I think. I, you know, I think that I'm worried by what you're saying. I, I think that that your interests aren't in the best interests of Weymouth Football Club by the statements and the dancing around the questions that you're doing. And, and, and for me, you know, I, well, I, I'm, wor I'm me worried just, about the statement you're making, that you're looking... Let me, just, let me just say something to you. You don't know what you're talking about. So everything we've done is in the best interest of Weymouth Football Club. Mm. So, so they're safe then, they're safe. Dave, we saved, we saved it from liquidation 16 months ago. Have you forgotten that? There wouldn't have been a Weymouth Football Club. Oh, right, yeah. And what's, what happens now for them? What happens now? Well, without the, the investment that that um, my, my family have put in and that Pranus has put in, there wouldn't be a Weymouth Football Club. Yes, yes now, so what happens now? What, what's hap just, just to hear me out. Now, we publicly said probably two months ago if people didn't want us there they could buy the football club it's all talk and we had one person come forward and it was an insult to us with an offer they made for the majority shareholding £25,000 was up for the ground as well? for everything, for the whole shareholding of the football club they wanted to pay £25,000 mm. how's that in the best interests of the football club? The football club wouldn't survive a month or two with that. Right, That's so what's going to happen? The football club will survive, which is the best interest to happen. <laughs> so can I just butt in there? We've, we've gone down to Banbury a couple of weeks ago, after I'd resigned, and there were fans there. All they want is to go and watch Weymouth play football. They're not interested in the politics and things like yourself trying to say this, that and the other. All they want to do is go and support their team. I'm not. I'm not saying this, that George. I'm not saying this, that, and the other. I'm just saying that I, I don't think team alive. We've kept their team going, and we will continue to do so. If that means that a ground share is the way forward, then that's something that the board, I'm sure, will have to to look at. All I'm saying is my opinion is that it's not just for Weymouth. That's in football in general is the way 
that clubs will have to go. You've only got to look at, you know, probably 40% of football clubs that are in trouble at the moment, and that's probably me being kind, saying 40%. You know, you've got, again, look at this year in the Conference Premier, you've got three clubs now that have been hit with financial irregularities. You know, you've got Kidderminster, Histon, and now you've got Rushton that have been fined by the Conference. When's it going to stop? You know, people go chasing dreams, they keep going and going for it. The problem is, is people don't live within their means, they've got stadiums that cost them too much money, and they're, and they're only played at 20, 30 times a year. Yeah. And if neighbours got together and used the stadium and had double incomes coming in from other things, I think that's the way forward. And, yeah. you know, no, no one's going to, to Dorchester, to Sean Hearn and saying there, oh, it's not right for you to have Weymouth here. He'll welcome okay. us with open arms. Well, okay, listen, all, the, all, yes, that's fine, George. All I'd say is that if the board's going to make a decision about what happens to the football club, will the fans have a say in that decision, or will it be strictly your family, which is the board, or will the fans have a say in whether that's what they would like to do or not like to not want to do? Yeah, the again, before I resigned, I, I sat down with the chairman of the Weymouth Supporters Trust, which is uh, A.D. McDonald, and they've, they've been kept in the loop on everything right. that's gone forward. And again, as I mentioned, you know, we spoke to 60 or 70 fans that travelled up to Banbury, and probably 80% of them, all they're interested in is going and watching their team play football, wherever that is, even if it was on the Marshlands. All they want to do is watch Weymouth Football Club in the <coughs> guide is now, rather than an AFC Weymouth because they've had to go bust them into liquidation. So what what we are doing is acting in the best interests of the football club by making sure it survives. Well, let's throw that out to the Weymouth fans. If if you agree with what George is saying, you can, of course, tell us, as always, non-league at bbc.co.uk. Dave Waters. George, yeah, sorry um, just to join in here now, really, but one, you, know, you mentioned that sale and £25,000 you were off, and, OK, you've obviously put more money into the club than that. Um it may have been in the best, in, not in the best interest of, of, of you and your family, but it might have been in the best interest of the club. People buy failing businesses for a pound and then they invest in them after, so that could have happened. Yeah, um, it's not, and, a failing, uh, not a failing business. Uh, no, well, okay, well, business if it's, what, what, well, on to that point then. Why, why did you buy that? Why, why did you get involved in Weymouth you know, last year and stuff? Because we, we're a football, f- football family. Uh, you know, from our times at Cambridge, and you know, we 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 just wanted to to help a football club out, and we you know we've turned out round uh, around its fortunes. It was uh, going into liquidation, and um, we've we've done a very good job there. And you know, from from now, it's a case of um, we, we're just going to continue the job, and hopefully that is keeping the team up this season. We've got a decent manager there, and um, next season we hopefully kick on. Right, okay, Joel. Well, I've got to accept what you're saying, I suppose, about doing a good job. And I'm sure you've been trying, but it can't be. It can't have been that great of a job that's been done. Your, your business plan must have gone wrong somewhere. Otherwise, you wouldn't be talking about ground sharing at a ground where all the fans, and I know a few Weymouth fans, that's the last place they want to go. No, what the situation is quite clear is that the ground is actually a problem to the club. There's £400,000 worth of repairs need doing on it over the next 45 years. Now, if the fans don't turn up and watch the team play football, yeah. then you don't get the income. But they're not going to go to Dorchester, are they? If you're down to 500 now, I reckon it'll be down to 200 at Dorchester. We've also had <coughs> local, local companies go bust on us, owing us money, sponsorship. Mm. Right. Now, okay. it's a tough world out there at the moment. So, so George... George, I want to give you the opportunity because obviously, you know, you've come on and you've answered some questions mm. that have been perhaps quite tough to answer, but you have answered them for us. What about now for you? You say you're no longer involved with the club, your family are involved with it. What next for, for George Rolls? Who knows? Who knows? Um, do, you, do you still want to be involved in football? It's, it's in the blood, isn't it? You know, it's, it's a case of uh, I'm sure there's other opportunities out there. And, um, you know, I'm sure uh, next season we'll turn up somewhere. <laughs> is it is it not difficult, though, when you keep... Because, you, you know, when all that happened with, with Cambridge and now at Weymouth, and you keep getting knocked all the time constantly. It might not be the majority of fans, but we're certainly getting a few fans through that, that perhaps don't want you at Weymouth. And I remember that was the case at Cambridge as well. When you keep getting that barrage of abuse, how do you keep going? But, but you say barrage <clears throat> of abuse, but again, it's minority. And 
people don't like it when there's change and when things happen. And, you know, you've only can look at the record at Cambridge. It was 500 or 1,000 pound loss when, when I went there. We turned around to being nearly, only I think it was 80,000 we lost in the last year. Last year's figures come out, no one backed an eyelid. They lost 433,000 pounds. Their gates are down by 1,500 people. You know, they've not got no playoffs. They've got nothing to play for this year other than trying to stay up. So, you know, something, something's gone wrong drastically there, hasn't it? And are you determined mm-hmm. to, to make things work for you? So you determined to go to a club and, and get that club on a, a level playing field and then take them up and get a club into the Football League? No, it's, 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 at, the, at the end of the day, you know, only a certain amount of clubs can, can get promoted, some get relegated. Um, all it's about is making sure wherever you are, you know, that financially they're, they're sound and living within its means. Now, at Weymouth, we had that budget this year. Unfortunately, as I say, we've had local companies go bust on us, owing us money. We've had other people renege on promises of money that they were mm. putting in. And, you know, we've, we've got to look at, look at every avenue. Commercially, things are tough. So, you know, for, for, for me, it's, it's a case of, you know, we, we'll see what happens in the future. And I'll, I'll give you one final opportunity, George. Where do you think Weymouth will be? What will happen with the ground? And where do you think Weymouth will be at the end of this season? I can't, I can't answer that. That's something that you need to ask the board members. Um, <laughs> oh, George, that's where the problem is. Did, in this did, 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 did. Well, get, let's get the board members on. Mm. Um, you know, that's, that, you know my, my recommendations, as I say, before I left, was to move to Dorchester. <clears throat> George, uh, thanks for coming on the show tonight. If there are any members of the Weymouth board, or George, in, in fact, if you'd like to get anyone else from your family on who's still connected with the club and on the board, we're more than happy to have them on the show as well. That's George Rolls, yeah. former chairman down at Weymouth. Weymouth fans can react to anything that George was saying at Non-League Show on Twitter.